What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast, episode 39. I'm your host, James Walter, and with me is nobody. If you are watching, you already can see that Chris is not here this week. He um, had some stuff he had to take care of, and he was unable to join us. But we did not want you guys to miss two episodes so close together, so I've decided that I will go ahead and just go solo tonight. And so what that means is you're going to get a kind of shorter episode than you're probably used to if you've been joining us all year. Um, if you're just joining tonight, welcome. I said tonight, but I'm not even live streaming. So if you're just joining us now, welcome. Um, we're glad that you've joined us, and we're going to have a good time still. So let's get into some stories real quick, and then uh, we're going to let you go early this week. So first up... Um, if you guys have been keeping up with any, you know, really popular tech news this year, you know that drones are a pretty big deal. And as part of drones being a big deal, people taking out drones has been a pretty big deal. Uh, most notably one that we've talked about was that fisherman who um, cast his line on a drone and brought it down, and that guy was not happy. Well, if you're in the U.S. Army and you're worried about drones, good news. Um, a company today, or earlier this week rather, unveiled the very first handheld drone disruption gun. Basically, imagine yourself having a gun that um, has a cone at the end of it, basically, that shoots radio waves instead of bullets. And you point it at the drone, and it interferes with the signal, and brings it down nice and safe. This thing is pretty sweet. They say it has a start time of like less than 0.1 seconds, so it's pretty fast. And it has a continuous runtime of about five hours before I guess it needs to be recharged or just chucked along the side of the road and left to die. Either way, if you're out and about and you need to bring down a drone and you don't want whoever's flying it to get out, um, out of your range, or if you don't want to detonate some bomb they're carrying and try and crash it into you, it's pretty sweet. There's a YouTube video they're showing this thing off. You just point it at the drone. I guess you pull some sort of trigger or push a button or something. And then the drone just starts to come down. Uh, the video is pretty interesting. There'll definitely be links for it because you're going to want to go check it out. And uh, it's pretty cool. Now, speaking of drones, um, another place that's interesting for drones is underwater. Now, on Kickstarter, there's this project called like Tri Trident ROV. And it's basically an underwater drone. This company has already had a previous kind of underwater drone that they did previously on Kickstarter. Well, they're doing another one, and if you just give them $10 and back it in September of next year, that's September 2016, you can have a chance to be one of the beta testers for their internet-controlled drone function. Now, that's a pretty sweet deal. You may not have a drone, you may not live close enough to the water to have an underwater drone, but if you give them $10 for their project, and it looks like they're probably going to get back, so you give them that $10, they're going to make this sweet drone, and then you, yes you, can drive it for $10 over the internet. It's pretty cool. Basically, it looks like a, a box of cereal that goes underwater, so it's not gonna get soggy because it's probably not cardboard. But that's kind of what it looks like. And it's gonna go underwater, and um, you know, people say that space is the next frontier, but a lot of people also say that under the ocean is the last great frontier because there's a lot of scary stuff down there that we don't know what's down there. They find some pretty crazy stuff. And then, lastly, speaking of the final frontier, SpaceX says, yeah, we know early this year we had a rocket kind of explode, and that's not good, because even though no one was hurt, uh, because no one was on the rocket, it was just supplies, rockets blowing up is not good news. Well, they said, guess what? We're ready for launch again, hopefully by December. That's a pretty big achievement, considering the other big... Um, firms that do space launches when they had rockets, one of them waited a year. NASA, they waited two whole years after um, one of their space shells exploded. Of course, people were on that space shell, so maybe it was a little bit more devastating. But nonetheless, SpaceX says, hey, we're back in action. We got the Falcon 9 ready. We want to launch this thing up, take the supplies up there, and we're going to try and land the Falcon 9 again. Yes. They are going for another attempt at recovering the first stage of the rocket so it can be reused. Um, if they can do this, it'll bring their launch times down even less, and that's kind of impressive. So anyways, 
That's all your tech news for this week. I'm James Walter. If you want to follow me, all you got to do is go to twitter.com slash James Walter, and I'm there. Everything I do is there. It's pretty interesting sometimes. Sometimes it's dead silent, because that's just the way it goes. If you want to follow my ghost friend here, he's on Twitter, at NeverLoseHeart, and he probably posts a lot more than me, because he just does. Of course, you can keep up with the Weekly Flare. All you got to do, go to theweeklyflare.com, or you can go to Twitter, slash theweeklyflare.com, or Instagram, at theweeklyflare, or Facebook, at theweeklyflare. You can even go to youtube.com, slash C slash the Weekly Flare podcast. Don't forget to put that podcast if you go to YouTube, though, because otherwise you will get zero results. And that's sad. Anyways, I'm James Walter. That's not Chris Garcia. This is the Weekly Flare. And hopefully we'll see you guys again next week with both of us. Peace.